Carl Pearson HFRSELLD, originally named Carl, the 27th of March 1857 to the 27th of April 1936, was an English mathematician and biostatistician. He has been credited with establishing the discipline of mathematical statistics. He founded the world's first university statistics department at University College London in 1911, and contributed significantly to the field of biometrics and meteorology. Pearson was also a proponent of social Darwinism and eugenics. Pearson was a protégé and biographer of Sir Francis Galton. Biography <inaudible> 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 Pearson was born in Islington, London to William Pearson Q.C. of the Inner Temple, and his wife Fanny nay Smith, and had two siblings, Arthur and Amy. Pearson was educated privately at University College School, after which he went to King's College, Cambridge in 1876 to study mathematics, graduating in 1879 as third wrangler in the mathematical tripos. He then travelled to Germany to study physics at the University of Heidelberg under G. H. Quink and metaphysics under Kuno Fischer. He next visited the University of Berlin, where he attended the lectures of the physiologist Emile du Bois Raymond on Darwinism. Emile was a brother of Paul du Bois Raymond, the mathematician. Pearson also studied Roman law, taught by Bruns and Mommsen, medieval and 16th century German literature, and socialism. He became an accomplished historian and Germanist and spent much of the 1880s in Berlin, Heidelberg, Vienna, Sag Bei Lenskirk, and Brixlig. He wrote on passion plays, religion, Goethe, Werther, as well as sex-related themes, and was a founder of the Men and Women's Club. Pearson was offered a Germanics post at King's College, Cambridge. Comparing Cambridge students to those he knew from Germany, Karl found German students inathletic and weak. He wrote his mother, I used to think athletics and sport was overestimated at Cambridge, but now I think it cannot be too highly valued. On returning to England in 1880, Pearson first went to Cambridge. Back in Cambridge, I worked in the engineering shops, but drew up the schedule in Middle and Althoch Dutch for the medieval languages Tripos. In his first book, The New Werther, Pearson gives a clear indication of why he studied so many diverse subjects. I rush from science to philosophy, and from philosophy to our old friends the poets, and then, over wearied by too much idealism, I fancy I become practical in returning to science. Have you ever attempted to conceive all there is in the world worth knowing? That not one subject in the universe is unworthy of study? The giants of literature, the mysteries of many-dimensional space, the attempts of Boltzmann and Crookes to penetrate nature's very laboratory, the Kantian theory of the universe, and the latest discoveries in embryology, with their wonderful tales of the development of life. What an immensity beyond our grasp. Mankind seems on the verge of a new and glorious discovery. What Newton did to simplify the planetary motions must now be done to unite in one whole the various isolated theories of mathematical physics. Pearson then returned to London to study law, emulating his father. Quoting Pearson's own account, Coming to London, I read in chambers in Lincoln's Inn, drew up bills of sale, and was called to the bar, but varied legal studies by lecturing on Heat at Barnes, on Martin Luther at Hampstead, and on LaSalle and Marx on Sundays at revolutionary clubs around Soho. His next career move was to the Inner Temple, where he read law until 1881, although he never practiced. After this, he returned to mathematics, deputizing for the mathematics professor at King's College, London in 1881 and for the professor at University College, London in 1883. In 1884, he was appointed to the Goldsmith Chair of Applied Mathematics and Mechanics at University College, London. Pearson became the editor of Common Sense of the Exact Sciences 1885 when William Kingdon Clifford died. 1891 saw him also appointed to the professorship of geometry at Gresham College. Here he met Walter Frank Raphael Weldon, a zoologist who had some interesting problems requiring quantitative solutions. The collaboration, in biometry and evolutionary theory, was a fruitful one and lasted until Weldon died in 1906. Weldon introduced Pearson to Charles Darwin's cousin Francis Galton, who was interested in aspects of evolution such as heredity and eugenics. Pearson became Galton's protege, at times to the verge of hero worship. In 1890, Pearson married Maria Sharp. 
The couple had three children, Sigrid Lotitia Pearson, Helga Sharp Pearson, and Egan Pearson, who became a statistician himself and succeeded his father as head of the Applied Statistics Department at University College. Maria died in 1928 and in 1929 Carl married Margaret Victoria Child, a co-worker at the Biometric Laboratory. He and his family lived at Seven Well Road in Hampstead, now marked with a blue plaque. After Galton's death in 1911, Pearson embarked on producing his definitive biography, a three-volume tome of narrative, letters, genealogies, commentaries, and photographs, published in 1914, 1924, and 1930, with much of Pearson's own money paying for their print runs. The biography, done, to satisfy myself and without regard to traditional standards, to the needs of publishers or to the tastes of the reading public." Triumphed Galton's life, work and personal heredity. He predicted that Galton, rather than Charles Darwin, would be remembered as the most prodigious grandson of Erasmus Darwin. When Galton died, he left the residue of his estate to the University of London for a chair in eugenics. Pearson was the first holder of this chair. The Galton Chair of Eugenics, later the Galton Chair of Genetics, in accordance with Galton's wishes. He formed the Department of Applied Statistics with financial support from the Draper's Company, into which he incorporated the Biometric and Galton Laboratories. He remained with the department until his retirement in 1933, and continued to work until his death at Cold Harbor, Surrey on 27 April 1936. Pearson was a zealous atheist and a freethinker. Topic. Family He married twice. First in 1890 to Maria Sharp, then following Maria's death in 1928, he married Margaret Victoria Child. Topic. Einstein and Pearson's work When the 23-year-old Albert Einstein started the Olympia Academy Study Group in 1902, with his two younger friends, Maurice Solovine and Conrad Habicht, his first reading suggestion was Pearson's The Grammar of Science. This book covered several themes that were later to become part of the theories of Einstein and other scientists. Pearson asserted that the laws of nature are relative to the perceptive ability of the observer. Irreversibility of natural processes, he claimed, is a purely relative conception. An observer who travels at the exact velocity of light would see an eternal now, or an absence of motion. He speculated that an observer who traveled faster than light would see time reversal, similar to a cinema film being run backwards. Pearson also discussed antimatter, the fourth dimension, and wrinkles in time. Pearson's relativity was based on idealism, in the sense of ideas or pictures in a mind. There are many signs, he wrote that a sound idealism is surely replacing, as a basis for natural philosophy, the crude materialism of the older physicists." Preface to Second Ed., The Grammar of Science Further, he stated, Science is in reality a classification and analysis of the contents of the mind. Quote, quote, in truth, the field of science is much more consciousness than an external world. Ibid. ch. 2, section 6. Law in the scientific sense is thus essentially a product of the human mind and has no meaning apart from man. Ibid. Ch. 3, Section 4 Topic. Politics and eugenics A eugenicist who applied his social Darwinism to entire nations, Pearson saw war against inferior races as a logical implication of the theory of evolution. My view, and I think it may be called the scientific view of a nation," he wrote, "...is that of an organized whole, kept up to a high pitch of internal efficiency by ensuring that its numbers are substantially recruited from the better stocks, and kept up to a high pitch of external efficiency by contest, chiefly by way of war with inferior races." He reasoned that, if August Weismann's theory of germ plasm is correct, the nation is wasting money when it tries to improve people who come from poor stock. Weismann claimed that acquired characteristics could not be inherited. Therefore, training benefits only the trained generation. Their children will not exhibit the learned improvements and, in turn, will need to be improved. No degenerate and feeble stock will ever be converted into healthy and sound stock by the accumulated effects of education, good laws, and sanitary surroundings. 
Such means may render the individual members of a stock passable if not strong members of society, but the same process will have to be gone through again and again with their offspring, and this in ever widening circles, if the stock, owing to the conditions in which society has placed it, is able to increase its numbers. History shows me one way, and one way only, in which a high state of civilization has been produced, namely, the struggle of race with race, and the survival of the physically and mentally fitter race. If you want to know whether the lower races of man can evolve a higher type, I fear the only course is to leave them to fight it out among themselves, and even then the struggle for existence between individual and individual, between tribe and tribe, may not be supported by that physical selection due to a particular climate on which probably so much of the Aryan's success depended." Pearson was known in his lifetime as a prominent freethinker and socialist. He gave lectures on such issues as the woman's question. This was the era of the suffragist movement in the UK and upon Karl Marx. His commitment to socialism and its ideals led him to refuse the offer of being created an OB officer of the Order of the British Empire in 1920 and also to refuse a knighthood in 1935. In the myth of the Jewish race Raphael and Jennifer Patai cite Karl Pearson's 1925 opposition in the first issue of the journal Annals of Eugenics which he founded to Jewish immigration into Britain. Pearson alleged that these immigrants will develop into a parasitic race taken on the average, and regarding both sexes, this alien Jewish population is somewhat inferior physically and mentally to the native population. Contributions to biometrics Carl Pearson was important in the founding of the School of Biometrics, which was a competing theory to describe evolution and population inheritance at the turn of the 20th century. His series of 18 papers, "'Mathematical Contributions to the Theory of Evolution'", established him as the founder of the Biometrical School for Inheritance. In fact, Pearson devoted much time during 1893 to 1904 to developing statistical techniques for biometry. These techniques, which are widely used today for statistical analysis, include the chi-squared test, standard deviation, and correlation and regression coefficients. Pearson's law of ancestral heredity stated that germ plasm consisted of heritable elements inherited from the parents as well as from more distant ancestors, the proportion of which varied for different traits. Carl Pearson was a follower of Galton, and although the two differed in some respects, Pearson used a substantial amount of Francis Galton's statistical concepts in his formulation of the biometrical school for inheritance, such as the law of regression. The biometric school, unlike the Mendelians, focused not on providing a mechanism for inheritance, but rather on providing a mathematical description for inheritance that was not causal in nature. While Galton proposed a discontinuous theory of evolution, in which species would have to change via large jumps rather than small changes that build up over time, Pearson pointed out flaws in Galton's argument and actually used Galton's ideas to further a continuous theory of evolution, whereas the Mendelians favored a discontinuous theory of evolution. While Galton focused primarily on the application of statistical methods to the study of heredity, Pearson and his colleague Weldon expanded statistical reasoning to the fields of inheritance, variation, correlation, and natural and sexual selection. For Pearson, the theory of evolution was not intended to identify a biological mechanism that explained patterns of inheritance, whereas the Mendelians postulated the gene as the mechanism for inheritance. Pearson criticized Battison and other biologists for their failure to adopt biometrical techniques in their study of evolution. Pearson criticized biologists who did not focus on the statistical validity of their theories, stating that, "...before we can accept any cause of a progressive change as a factor we must have not only shown its plausibility but if possible have demonstrated its quantitative ability." Biologists had succumbed to almost metaphysical speculation as to the causes of heredity," which had replaced the process of experimental data collection that actually might allow scientists to narrow down potential theories. For Pearson, laws of nature were useful for making accurate predictions and for concisely describing trends in observed data. Causation was the experience that a certain sequence has occurred and recurred in the past. Thus, identifying a particular mechanism of genetics was not a worthy pursuit of biologists, who should instead focus on mathematical descriptions of empirical data. 
This, in part led to the fierce debate between the biometricians and the Mendelians, including Battison. After Battison rejected one of Pearson's manuscripts that described a new theory for the variability of an offspring, or homotyposis, Pearson and Weldon established Biometrica in 1902. Although the biometric approach to inheritance eventually lost to the Mendelian approach, the techniques Pearson and the biometricians at the time developed are vital to studies of biology and evolution today. Topic awards from professional bodies Pearson achieved widespread recognition across a range of disciplines and his membership of, and awards from, various professional bodies reflects this, 1896, elected FRS, Fellow of the Royal Society 1898, awarded the Darwin Medal 1911, awarded the honorary degree of LLD from the University of St Andrews 1911, awarded a DSC from University of London 1920, offered and refused the OBE 1932, awarded the Rudolf Virtue Medal by the Berliner Anthropologische Gesellschaft 1935, offered and refused. A knighthood was also elected an honorary fellow of King's College, Cambridge, the Royal Society of Edinburgh, University College London, and the Royal Society of Medicine, and a member of the Actuaries Club. A sesquicentenary conference was held in London on the 23rd of March 2007 to celebrate the 150th anniversary of his birth. Topic contributions to statistics Pearson's work was all-embracing in the wide application and development of mathematical statistics, and encompassed the fields of biology, epidemiology, anthropometry, medicine, psychology and social history. In 1901, with Weldon and Galton, he founded the journal Biometrica whose object was the development of statistical theory. He edited this journal until his death. Among those who assisted Pearson in his research were a number of female mathematicians who included Beatrice Mabel Cave Brown Cave and Francis Cave Brown Cave. He also founded the journal Annals of Eugenics now Annals of Human Genetics in 1925. He published the Draper's Company research memoirs largely to provide a record of the output of the Department of Applied Statistics not published elsewhere. Pearson's thinking underpins many of the classical statistical methods which are in common use today. Examples of his contributions are, correlation coefficient. The correlation coefficient first conceived by Francis Galton was defined as a product moment, and its relationship with linear regression was studied. Method of moments. Pearson introduced moments, a concept borrowed from physics, as descriptive statistics and for the fitting of distributions to samples. Pearson's system of continuous curves. A system of continuous univariate probability distributions that came to form the basis of the now conventional continuous probability distributions. Since the system is complete up to the fourth moment, it is a powerful complement to the Pearsonian method of moments. Chi distance. A precursor and special case of the Mahalanobis distance. P value. Defined as the probability measure of the complement of the ball with the hypothesized value as center point and chi distance as radius. Foundations of the statistical hypothesis testing theory and the statistical decision theory. In the seminal on the criterion paper, Pearson proposed testing the validity of hypothesized values by evaluating the chi distance between the hypothesized and the empirically observed values via the p-value, which was proposed in the same paper. The use of preset evidence criteria, so-called alpha type 1 error probabilities, was later proposed by Jersey Neyman and Egan Pearson. Pearson's chi-squared test a hypothesis test using normal approximation for discrete data. Principal component analysis. The method of fitting a linear subspace to multivariate data by minimizing the chi distances. The first introduction of the histogram is usually credited to Pearson. Topic publications Pearson, Carl, 1880. The New Werther. C. Keegan Paul and Co. Pearson, Carl, 1882. The Trinity, a 19th century passion play. Cambridge, E. Johnson. Pearson, Carl, 1887. Die Fronica. Strasbourg, K.J. Trubner Pearson, Carl, 1887. The Moral Basis of Socialism. William Reeves, London. Pearson, Carl, 1888. The Ethic of Freethought. London, T. Fisher Onwin. Rep. University Press of the Pacific, 2002. Pearson, Carl, 1892. The Grammar of Science. London, Walter Scott. Dover Publications, 2004 ISBN 0 486 49581 7. Pearson, Carl. 1892. The New University for London A Guide to Its History and a Criticism of Its Defects. London, T. Fisher Onwin. Pearson, K. 1896. 
Mathematical Contributions to the Theory of Evolution. 3. Regression, Heredity and Panmixia. Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society of London, 187-253-318. Bibcode, 1896rspta.187, 253p. doi, 10.1098.rsta.1896.0007. Pearson, Carl 1897. The Chances of Death and Other Studies in Evolution, 2 volume. London, Edward Arnold. Pearson, Carl 1904. On the Theory of Contingency and Its Relation to Association and Normal Correlation. London, Dulau and Co. Pearson, Carl 1905. On the General Theory of Skew Correlation and Nonlinear Regression. London, Dulau and Co. Pearson, Carl 1906. A Mathematical Theory of Random Migration. London, Dulau and Co. Pearson, Carl 1907. Studies in National Deterioration. London, Dulau and Co. Pearson, Carl, and Pollard, A. F. Campbell 1907. An Experimental Study of the Stresses in Masonry Dams. London, Dulau and Co. Pearson, Carl 1907. A First Study of the Statistics of Pulmonary Tuberculosis. London, Dulau and Co. Pearson, Carl, and Barrington, Amy 1909. A First Study of the Inheritance of Vision and of the Relative Influence of Heredity and Environment on Sight. London, Dulau and Co. Pearson, Carl, Reynolds, W. D., and Stanton, W. F. 1909. On a Practical Theory of Elliptical and Pseudo-Elliptical Arches, with Special Reference to the Ideal Masonry Arch. Pearson, Carl 1909. The Groundwork of Eugenics. London, Dulau and Co. Pearson, Carl 1909. The Scope and Importance to the State of the Science of National Eugenics. London, Dulau and Co. Pearson, Carl, and Barrington, Amy 1910. A Preliminary Study of Extreme Alcoholism in Adults. London, Dulau and Co. Pearson, Carl, and Elderton, Ethel M. 1910. A First Study of the Influence of Parental Alcoholism on the Physique and Ability of the Offspring. London, Dulau and Co. Pearson, Carl 1910. The Influence of Parental Alcoholism on the Physique and Ability of the Offspring, a Reply to the Cambridge Economists. London, Dulau and Co. Pearson, Carl, and Elderton, Ethel M. 1910. A Second Study of the Influence of Parental Alcoholism on the Physique and Ability of the Offspring. London, Dulau and Co. Pearson, Carl 1911. An attempt to correct some of the misstatements made by Sir Victor Horsley and Mary D. Sturge, M.D. in the criticisms of the Galton Laboratory Memoir, a first study of the influence of parental alcoholism, and C. London, Dulau and Co. Pearson, Carl, Nettleship, Edward, and Usher, Charles 1911-1913. A monograph on albinism in man, two volume. London, Dulau and Co., Ltd. Pearson, Carl 1912. The Problem of Practical Eugenics. London, Dulau & Co. Pearson, Carl 1912. Tuberculosis, Heredity and Environment. London, Dulau & Co. Pearson, Carl 1913. On the Correlation of Fertility with Social Value, a Cooperative Study. London, Dulau & Co. Pearson, Carl, and Jaderholm, Gustav A. 1914. Mentalism and the Problem of Mental Defect, 2, on the Continuity of Mental Defect. London, Dulau & Co. Pearson, Carl, Williams, M. H., and Bell, Julia 1914. A Statistical Study of Oral Temperatures in School Children. London, Dulau & Co. Pearson, Carl 1914-24-30. The Life, Letters and Labors of Francis Galton, 3 volume. Cambridge University Press, Cambridge. Pearson, Carl 1915. Some Recent Misinterpretations of the Problem of Nurture and Nature. Cambridge University Press. Pearson, Carl, Young, A. W., and Elderton, Ethel 1918. On the Torsion Resulting from Flexor in Prisms with Cross-Sections of Uni-Axial Symmetry Only. Cambridge University Press. Pearson, Carl, and Bell, Julia 1919. A Study of the Long Bones of the English Skeleton. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. Pearson, Carl 1920. The Science of Man, Its Needs and Its Prospects. Cambridge University Press. 
Pearson, Carl, and Karn, Mary Noel 1922. Study of the data provided by a baby clinic in a large manufacturing town. Cambridge University Press. Pearson, Carl 1922. Francis Galton, 1822–1922, A Centenary Appreciation. Cambridge University Press. Pearson, Carl 1923. On the Relationship of Health to the Psychical and Physical Characters in School Children. Cambridge University Press. Pearson, Carl 1926. On the Skull and Portraits of George Buchanan. Edinburgh, London, Oliver and Boyd, Articles Pearson, Carl 1883. Maimonides and Spinoza. Mind, 8-338-353. Pearson, Carl 1885. On a Certain Atomic Hypothesis. Transactions of the Cambridge Philosophical Society, 14-71-120. Pearson, Carl 1890. On Wohler's Experiments on Alternating Stress. The Messenger of Mathematics. XX, 21-37. Pearson, Carl 1891. Ether Squirts. American Journal of Mathematics. 13 309-72. doi, 10.2307, JSTOR 2369570. Pearson, Carl On Telegony in Man, Proceedings of the Royal Society of London, Vol. LX, pp. 273-283. Pearson, Carl 1897. On a form of spurious correlation which may arise when indices are used in the measurement of organs, Proceedings of the Royal Society of London, Vol. LX, pp. 489-502. Pearson, Carl 1899. On the reconstruction of the stature of prehistoric races. Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society of London, 192-169-243. Bibcode, 1899rspta.192, 169p. doi, 10.1098, rsta.1899.0004. Pearson, Carl, Lee, Alice, Bramley Moore, Leslie 1899. Genetic Selection. Philosophical Transactions of the Royal Society of London, 192-257-330. Bibcode, 1899rspta.192, 257p. doi, 10.1098, rsta.1899.0006. Pearson, Carl, and Whiteley, M. A. Data for the Problem of Evolution in Man, I, A First Study of the Variability and Correlation of the Hand, Proceedings of the Royal Society of London, Vol. LXV, pp. 126-151. Pearson, Carl, and Beaton, Mary Data for the Problem of Evolution in Man, Two. A First Study on the Inheritance of Longevity and the Selective Death Rate in Man, Proceedings of the Royal Society of London, Vol. LXV, pp. 290-305. Pearson, Carl 1900. On the Law of Reversion, Proceedings of the Royal Society of London, Vol. LXVI, pp. 140-164. Pearson, Carl, Beaton, M., and Ewell, G. U. On the Correlation Between Duration of Life and the Number of Offspring, Proceedings of the Royal Society of London, Vol. LXVII, pp. 159-179. Pearson, Carl On the criterion that a given system of deviations from the probable in the case of a correlated system of variables is such that it can be reasonably supposed to have arisen from random sampling, Philosophical Magazine, 5th Series, Vol. L, pp. 157-175. Pearson, Carl on Lines and Planes of Closest Fit to Systems of Points in Space, Philosophical Magazine, 6th Series, Vol. 2, pp. 559-572. Pearson, Carl The Law of Ancestral Heredity, Biometrica, Vol. 2, pp. 221-229. Pearson, Carl 
On a general theory of the method of false position, Philosophical Magazine, 6th Series, Volume 5, pp. 658-668. Pearson, Carl On the Influence of Past Experience on Future Expectation, Philosophical Magazine, 6th Series, Vol. 13, pp. 365–378. Pearson, Carl, and Gibson, Winifred Further Considerations on the Correlations of Stellar Characters, Monthly Notices of the Royal Astronomical Society, Vol. LXVIII, pp. 415–448. Pearson, Carl 1910. A Myth About Edward the Confessor. The English Historical Review, 25–517–520. doi, 10.1093-xxxx.x6.517. Pearson, Carl 1920. The Problems of Anthropology. The Scientific Monthly, 11, 5, 451 to 458. Bibcode 1920 Simo. 451 p. JSTOR 6421. Pearson, Carl. 1930. On a New Theory of Progressive Evolution: Annals of Eugenics, Vol. IV, Nos. 1 to 2, pp. 1 to 40. Pearson, Carl. 1931. On the Inheritance of Mental Disease, Annals of Eugenics, Vol. IV, Nos. 3-4, pp. 362-380, Miscellany Pearson, Carl 1885. The Common Sense of the Exact Sciences. London, Keegan, Paul, Trench & Co., Editor. Pearson, Carl 1886-1893. A History of the Theory of Elasticity and of the Strength of Materials from Galilei to the Present Time, Vol. 2, Vol. 3. Cambridge University Press editor. Pearson, Carl 1889. The Elastical Researches of Barre de Saint Venant. Cambridge University Press editor. Pearson, Carl 1888. The Positive Creed of Freethought, with some remarks on the relation of freethought to socialism. Being a lecture delivered at South Place Institute. London, William Reeves. Pearson, Carl 1901. National Life from the Standpoint of Science, an address delivered at Newcastle. London, Adam and Charles Black. Pearson, Carl 1908. A Second Study of the Statistics of Pulmonary Tuberculosis, Marital Infection. London, Dulau and Co., Editor. Pearson, Carl 1910. Nature and Nurture, The Problem of the Future, a Presidential Address. London, Dulau and Co. Pearson, Carl 1911. The Academic Aspect of the Science of Eugenics, a lecture delivered to undergraduates. London, Dulau & Co. Pearson, Carl 1912. Treasury of Human Inheritance, 2 Vol. Dulau & Co., London Editor. Pearson, Carl 1912. Eugenics and Public Health, an Address to Public Health Officers. London, Dulau & Co. Pearson, Carl 1912. Darwinism, Medical Progress and Eugenics. The Cavendish Lecture, an Address to the Medical Profession. London, Dulau & Co. Pearson, Carl 1912. Social Problems, Their Treatment, Past, Present, and Future, a Lecture. London, Dulau & Co. Pearson, Carl 1914. On the Handicapping of the Firstborn, being a lecture delivered at the Galton Laboratory. London, Dulau & Co. Pearson, Carl 1914. Tables for Statisticians and Biometricians. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press Editor. Pearson, Carl 1919-22. Tracts for Computers. Cambridge University Press Editor. Pearson, Carl 1921. Side Lights on the Evolution of Man, being a lecture delivered at the Royal Institution. Cambridge University Press. Pearson, Carl 1922. Tables of the Incomplete Gamma Function. London, Pub, for the Department of Scientific and Industrial Research by H.M. Stationary Office. Pearson, Carl 1923. Charles Darwin, 1809-1882, An Appreciation. Being a lecture delivered to the teachers of the London County Council. Cambridge University Press. Pearson, Carl 1927. The Right of the Unborn Child, Being a Lecture Delivered, to Teachers from the London County Council Schools. Cambridge University Press. Pearson, Carl 1934. Tables of the Incomplete Beta Function. Cambridge University Press, 2nd ed., 1968 Editor. 
Topic see also Eugenics The Grammar of Science Pearson's Chi-squared Test Pearson's R. Pearson Distribution Kikuchi Dairoku, a close friend and contemporary of Carl Pearson at University College School and Cambridge University List of Gresham Professors of Geometry Phi Coefficient Scientific Racism Biophysics Topic References Most of the biographical information above is taken from the Carl Pearson page at the Department of Statistical Sciences at University College London, which has been placed in the public domain. The main source for that page was a list of the papers and correspondence of Carl Pearson 1857 held in the Manuscripts Room, University College London Library, compiled by M. Merrington, B. Blundell, S. Burrow, J. Golden and J. Hogarth and published by the Publications Office, University College London, 1983. Additional information from entry for Carl Pearson in the Sackler Digital Archive of the Royal Society Topic Further reading Eisenhart, Churchill 1974. Dictionary of Scientific Biography, 10, New York, Charles Scribner's Sons, pp. 447–473. Norton, Bernard J. 1978. Carl Pearson and Statistics, The Social Origins of Scientific Innovation PDF. Social Studies of Science. 8 1, 3-34. doi, 10.1177, Pearson, E. S. Carl Pearson, An Appreciation of Some Aspects of His Life and Work. Cambridge University Press. Porter, T. M. Carl Pearson, The Scientific Life in a Statistical Age, Princeton University Press. ISBN 978-0-691-12635-7 External links Works by Carl Pearson, at JSTOR O'Connor, John J., Robertson, Edmund F. Carl Pearson. MacTutor History of Mathematics Archive, University of St. Andrews. Carl Pearson at the Mathematics Genealogy Project John Aldrich's Carl Pearson, a reader's guide at the University of Southampton contains many useful links to further sources of information. Encyclopedia Britannica Carl Pearson Gavin Tredoyer's Francis Galton website, galton.org, contains Pearson's biography of Francis Galton, and several other papers, in addition to nearly all of Galton's own published works. Carl Pearson and the Origins of Modern Statistics at the Rutherford Journal. Texts on Wikisource Nock, Albert J. A New Science and Its Findings. The American Magazine The Phillips Publishing Co., LXXIII, 5, 577, March 1912. Biometrica. From the Doctor's Dilemma by George Bernard Shaw. Pearson, Carl. Collier's New Encyclopedia, 1921. Studies in the History of Probability and Statistics, L. Carl Pearson and the Rule of Three. Stigler 2012 From Masaryk to Carl Pearson, Philosophy as Scientia Scientiarum